I used Power BI to save my client over $128,000 in a week. How did I do it? If you're someone who wants to get similar results, I'm gonna share three rules that will help you. Rule number one, never do what your client or boss wants you to do. That's right, don't just be a data monkey. Get curious, be nosy, poke around the data. You see, my client had a big problem, a big, expensive problem, but I wouldn't have found it if I just did what they wanted me to do. Henry Ford said, if he had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. I wasn't about to give my client what they wanted. What I was gonna do was to give them what they really needed. So I started digging into their data, really digging in. First thing I did was look at the data for all the work my client had done for their customers. There were hundreds of thousands of records. Every record was an individual transaction. I was curious to know how they calculated the fees they charged for each transaction. So I asked. Sometimes you have to ask more than one question. I kept asking questions until I had the answers I needed. Then I imported the invoice data from my client's billing system into Power BI and I set up the relationships between the transactions and the invoices. Bada bing bada. Oh my apple pie. Well, that's not good. What had I spotted? Missing invoices, lots of them. Where are the invoices for all these transactions? I said to myself, I took another look at the data thinking I must have overlooked something, but I hadn't. That's when it hit me. My client had been doing work they weren't billing for. I needed to find out how much and why. Now, not sending out invoices for work your company had done might sound like an obvious mistake, but this was no ordinary run-of-the-mill data set. You see, behind my client's data were pages and pages of government regulations. This is a highly controlled area of commerce. Think dark sunglasses, menacing looks. Just kidding. It's really just paragraph after paragraph of deadly dull text, but really important deadly dull text. And that brings us to rule number two. Always understand the data you're working with. 99% of the time, that means understanding the industry behind the data. You need domain knowledge. And in this case, it meant reading through the regulations. Because even though the problem I had found was with the invoices, I needed to learn about the work my client was doing before I could understand what could possibly be happening that they weren't billing for their work. Now these regulations had come about recently and somewhat suddenly. That meant there weren't any commercially available systems my client could use. So they had to build their own system and they had to do it quickly. Uh, nothing like a hastily put together homegrown system to keep track of complex critical data. All the more reason I needed to understand the data in case there happened to be any flaws in their system. Now, before I get into all the juicy details, I need to come up with a metaphor to represent my client's business since I can't talk about that. Hmm, let's see. Oh, I know. Imagine you're the owner of Big Burrito Company. The way the regulations work, when you buy certain ingredients, you can get a refund. Take tortillas, for example. Some kinds of tortillas get refunds, but others don't. Also, you get a certain refund amount for the first 100,000 pounds of tortillas you order, but a little smaller refund for the next 100,000. So here, you'd get a refund of 50 cents per pound up to 100,000 pounds of tortillas. After that, the refund amount drops to 35 cents per pound for the next 100,000. And the same for the rice, except the refund amounts are different and the quantities are different. And this goes for the beans and the cheese and the guac and mmm, getting hungry. Wait, where was I? Oh yeah. To add another layer of complexity, there's a limited time to apply for the refunds because after a certain number of days, the refunds expire. As you can imagine, this is all a lot to keep track of. But business at Big Burrito Company is good. And you as the owner are way too busy making burritos. So you hire someone else to claim the refunds for you. That's where my client comes in. They're the ones doing all the work to claim the refunds on your behalf. Now staying on top of all the refunds is no easy task. Understanding those nitty gritty regulations isn't for the faint of heart. My client was trying to keep track of all the data in their homegrown system. And I gotta say, the system they came up with wasn't all bad. There was just one big problem. They were entering all the data into their system, but they couldn't pull it out into an easy to read report, which made tracking all of those refunds incredibly difficult. Difficult to see which refunds needed to be filed and when they needed to be filed and how much to charge for each refund because you see, depending on the size of the order and when the refund was filed, the fees they charged were different. My client just didn't have an easy way to see all of this, which explains why they were missing invoices. The truth is the way they were doing it 
Keeping track of which refunds they had filed and which they hadn't was a time-intensive manual process. And that meant figuring out what to invoice was also a time-intensive manual process. And incredibly error-prone. The bottom line is that invoices were slipping through the cracks. So I knew what needed to be done. Make myself a burrito. Actually, no. What I really needed to do was make it easy for my client to see three things. First, when they needed to file for the refunds. Second, what work they had already invoiced and what they hadn't. And third, how much to invoice. The solution was crystal clear. Great, I thought. You know that feeling when you figure out the solution? And then you know that feeling when you realize it's not gonna be that easy? Yeah, that's what I felt. Where would I start? How much time will this take? Will I really be able to pull it off? Is it lunchtime yet? But I had to get down to business and start untangling this data mess. So I started where every data project should start, with the data model. And that's when I saw a major issue. The way my client had set up their data model, it made it really hard to run any useful calculations. You see, they were tracking all the refunds in a single table with every product in a different column. It probably made sense to them at the time. Since they were doing a lot of manual work with the data pivoted this way, it was easier to see it visually in the table. The problem, of course, with manual work is that it doesn't scale. And when volume increases, you stress your system to the point of breaking. That's what happened to my client. And I needed to fix it. So first, I fired up Power Query. I used the Unpivot tool to transform everything into a clean data structure that would make calculations a breeze. Next, I loaded the data into Power BI, and I began writing the measures. After completing those, I started creating the visuals. I created a table that showed which transactions had been invoiced and which hadn't. While working on that, I discovered another issue. Not only had my client not sent out invoices for work they had done, but I also figured out they were underbilling for some of the work they had done. And that brings us to rule number three. Don't trust, validate. Don't trust the data you've been given. Don't assume any of it's right. Instead of trusting my client's calculations, I wrote my own measures to calculate the fees my client had invoiced. And that's what showed me they had been incorrectly calculating their fees. So I added a column to the visual to show how much they had underbilled for each transaction. And I used conditional formatting to highlight every time they had underbilled. With all that in place, my client had an intuitive report that gave them all the info they needed right at their fingertips. The result? My client was able to send out invoices for all the work they hadn't billed. Their unbilled work amounted to $128,423. And with their new report, going forward, they would know exactly when to file the refunds and how much to charge for each refund. No more missed invoices. No more underbilling their customers. Not bad for a week's worth of Power BI work. But here I have a confession to make. I haven't been telling you the whole truth. You see, the problem was even bigger. My client didn't feel good about sending out invoices for work done more than a year ago, so they limited it to one year. If they had invoiced for all their unbilled work, the real savings would have been much, much more. And if I hadn't caught this error, every day that went by, my client would be losing more and more money. Now before you can do any of this, there's actually an important step you need to take first. So watch this video next where I break down how you can go beyond what your client or boss says they want to find out what they truly need. I'll see you over there. Hey!